Now we're going to go ahead and invite our next speaker because we have run five minutes over time. I'm so sorry about that. But our next speaker is the Managing Director of High Pines Training and Consultancy. And we're going to be talking about scaling up digitally with cloud ERP. Now, SMEs face many challenges during MCO time. Moreover, having manual processes increase the time span of administrative matters. This session will be sharing some advice on how to automate and perform tasks online using cloud ERP in order to enable scaling up faster and efficiently. Now, our speaker is the Managing Director. Once again, let's welcome Chun Hao. Hi, Chun Hao. Hi, Lauren. Good morning, Hello. everyone. Good morning. Have you had your breakfast? How are you yeah, doing? Yeah, I just had our break, uh, my breakfast downstairs in Mama. Ah. I'm able to you know, dine in into the restaurant now. That must be very nice. And to yeah. have Mama early in the morning. Oh, gosh, I wish I could have that. <laughs> but I don't take breakfast, so... Not a breakfast person. But that aside, um, do you have any questions? Because uh, you have 45 minutes in total, 30 minutes for your presentation, and the last 15 for your Q&A. All right, I'm ready to go. Okay, whenever you're ready, take it away. Go ahead and set up your screen. Okay. Are you able to see my slides? Yes, I can. Okay, so... Yep. Uh, good man. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, it's good to be uh, involved in this uh, Azabytes uh, SME Digital Fest. Well, uh, let me go through a little bit on my uh, background. I am the director of High Pines Training and Consultancy, and we are a digital transformer for SME. So what does it mean by digital transformer? What we do is we assist SME companies to digitalize their back office operation, namely from accounting to operation to HR, and we transform the whole manual process to automation or offline to online. Uh, I'm also a chartered accountant by profession with FCCA as well as uh, MIA. And uh, just last week, I ran, I ran two webinars one with MIA and another one with uh, APU, Asia Institute of Pacific University. And it seems that webinars is the norm nowadays, right? Everyone is doing webinar, you know, in whatever organization we are doing it. Um, right. Can you guys see on my screen? Somebody told me that you can't see. Lauren, can you see my slide? Yes, I can see your slides, okay. but uh, you need to put it in full screen. Okay, how about now? Is it in full screen? Mm, no, it's kind of, uh, it's showing me the next slide, you know, it's one of those features. Oh, okay. Uh, Hold on, yeah. I'm going to reshare. Share screen now. You're currently in presenter view. That I think that's the problem. Okay. You know, just share screen. Let's just give him a second here. So, guys, once again, if you have any questions, just leave them in the Q and A box, and uh, we'll answer them. About now, Lauren? Um, again, it's still in presenter view, if I'm not wrong. I, I, right. like, I can still see two displays. So. Okay. Hold on. Huh? Let me get my IT guy to help. Okay. How about now? Oh, yes. All right. This is good. All right. Okay. Let me minimize my. Okay. So, um, yeah. Where am I? I'm. Uh, I was sharing that I'm a chartered accountant, and I've also been a cloud accountant since 2014. So, what does that mean? It means that uh, we've been doing accounting through online 100%. Of course, during that time, uh, it was pre GST. And many SMEs or accountants uh, resist change, resist of doing uh, accounting online. But over the last 
uh, few years, especially during MCO, it seems that a lot of SME tend to accept cloud, whether it's accounting operation or HR, you name it. And they want it that way because it's very easy, very convenient. I've also been training cloud accounting and ERP to uh, a lot of SME as well as uh, accounting firm. And my previous experience is in Hewlett Packard, uh, Standard Financial Advisor as the head of operation as well as a consultant in KPMG. Now let's take a look at the impact of MCO, right? It, it, it was about three months and how has it changed the entire business? Firstly, we've been seeing a lot of this kind of news, uh, stores closing down, you know, retail shops closing down, you have uh, hotels closing down as well. And if you look at SS15, Damansara, Uptown, Kuchai Lama, you see a lot of banners, uh, places for rent out, for sale, that kind. And the main reason is because they have near to zero sales during that time. So how about those who managed to survive? They went online during that time and they managed to get some sales, right? However, there are some good news uh, other than shops closing down. Some are like working from home is now a permanent option. So many companies have uh, implemented working from home policy. And even now, so, uh, some of my clients are already doing it consistently every day. Some implement it probably alternate days. Even our company also, we implemented it uh, twice or once a week. Even globally, we are having that working from home. So I believe going forward for the next 10 years, there will be a cross country or borderless recruitment, meaning global companies or multinational will be hiring extensively throughout the whole world. And all you have to do is you only need a laptop and an internet connection and everyone can work from home, right? There are more big employers are talking about permanent work from home. Let me off this, I'm sharing the screen. And um, right, there are more and more such situation happening right now. And of course, there are there is a growth of virtual engagement. I just saw this in Facebook, and like MKH is doing a virtual tour. A lot of property companies are doing that. Help University is doing a virtual open day, and quite a number of uh, private schools are doing that as well. And virtual career fair is now the norm. So instead of traveling to a place to find a job or advertise about your company, whether there's position, you can now do it online virtually. You can even interview online. You can look at resume straight away. You can see that person and interview, right? How convenient it is. And I believe this will be norm going forward. So there are also a lot of grants and funding available. One of them is uh, from MDEC, which currently our solution is uh, qualified for it. And MDEC is providing 50% of grant for your solution up to 5,000 ringgit for each entity. And uh, uh, SME Bank, just announced about STTF, Transform, Transformation Funding. And they are providing all this in order to help SMEs to digitalize their operations. And there are a lot of webinars as like what, I'm, uh, what we are seeing right now. We have even MIA, you have APU, you have a lot of uh, platforms are doing webinar online. Even our meetings are done online, right? I have not seen a client since the 10th of June until now, face to face. Everything is done online. How convenient it is. So let's take a look at challenges during MCO. Some unable to sell, some closed office, suppliers could not deliver goods or raw materials. Unable to return to office to work as a computer is in the office. Unable to access from home for document and software. Access to software only limited to one person uh, and unable to process salary. We have quite a number of uh, clients immediately change to cloud HR because they need to process salary during that time. And their outsource uh, processor or outsource uh, payroll processor couldn't do the work because they couldn't go back to office, right? Those were the challenge. And unable to collaborate among employee because everything is, if you are using on-premise solution, it's very difficult to collaborate. What I've done cannot be seen by another uh, employee or uh, my coworker. And then do have experts to guide and assist them. Probably they can't see your data, so therefore they can't guide you and help you. So SME survival actions that I noticed during the MCO. They apply for wage subsidy. Of course, by now, many Malaysians are aware about it. Apply for loan, SRM, 0% loan, delay payments to supplier, chase collection from customers, retrenchments happening right now, request for discount from landlord, very common, and of course, cutting costs everywhere. 
But what are the winning actions during MCO? So for example, create new sales channel. I have quite a number of clients that have been running uh, offline services. One example is yoga training. And I advise them, why don't you go online round? Because you can't run your yoga training anymore. So why don't you do an online training? And therefore, the owner did that and managed to survive throughout the MCO because instead of having 100% drop of sales, you only have 70% drop. Then uh, you create new product or services. That means all this while you sell service, maybe you sell products, or all this while you sell products, or you start selling service as well. And train all employees to turn them into teller sales or online marketers. Because if your retail shop are closing, what job do they do? They have no job. So the only thing that they can do is sell online, whether it's through Facebook or cold call or anything. Sell discounted voucher for future spending. This is very frequent, uh, very normal for hotel industry. I just bought one myself from uh, Lexis High Biscus and it's only half price. What a good deal, right? So a lot of hotels are doing this. Some other companies are doing that as well. Now, of course, engagement webinars or Facebook Live. So one of my friends' uh, husband runs a uh, meat, selling meat on wholesale basis. During MCO, the sales is zero. So the only way to survive is go to Facebook Live and start selling meat. And that is a right way to do. Because not only you manage to survive by having sales, but you also have cash sales. Instead of credit sales, you have cash sales, right? People just pay money first and then wait for the new delivery. How nice. Your cash come in, you have cash to survive. So let's take a look at accounting and payroll evolution or ERP. Before the 90s, we've been doing everything manually. Then during the 90s, we have desktop uh, solution like UBS, you know, a lot of all those popular ones. And we have, we've been using that until now. And since 2001, there's a growth of uh, cloud ERP or accounting solution. And 2014, Malaysians start to adopt. Why 2014? Because that was the pre-GSD era. And a lot of SMEs are exploring. Today, adoption of cloud ERP or accounting is like, is like growing non-stop. Every now and then, people are asking an inquiry from us. Why? Why do I want to go cloud? Because it's very convenient. It's a lot of automation. I will share with you on the benefits. So what are the difference between desktop versus cloud? So desktop, you need to download, you need to install, you need to update and upgrade. Access only from installed computers. And low security because it relies on the business owner themselves. So if, imagine you are running a trading business and you have internet, of course, you have access to internet, and you start uh, connecting to internet using your desktop accounting software. That is when the hackers will start to hack you because you don't have a strong cyber security. And quite a number of my clients who previously using uh, desktop accounting software got struck by ransomware. That is when they say, I want to uh, upgrade to cloud. Which cloud do you recommend? Right. Limited software integration because in today's world is all about API and very limited uh, automation in transactions. So cloud will have a lot of benefit. For example, no download, don't need to install, don't need to update our version. There's only one version. So whoever has access to the cloud solution or ERP, you only have one version and everyone is looking at the same version. Access anywhere, anytime, that's for sure. So if today your manager is in US uh, having meeting, he or she can still have a look at the system or the data by just logging into internet or even from phone, they can do that. There is a high security because the software provider themselves are managing that security. So for example, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Oracle, all these are protecting your data. Now, the thing is that someone is selling you a software and tell you it's cloud, straight away you buy. You need to ask very detailed questions. You know, what kind of security are you providing? Is it just connect me to the internet? Are you providing that security as well? But if you're not, that is a very high risk because nobody is protecting the data that I'm using. So anytime you are being approached by a software provider, you must ask about the security, else you are in very high risk. There is an easy integration with a lot of software. Nowadays, as I mentioned, API, and there are a lot of automation available. So why move to an online accounting and payroll solution? Mobility anywhere, with phone, with iPad, web browser, and it is affordable because you have pay per use. If you don't want to use, then you stop using, you stop paying. Reduce cost because you don't need an IT server, you don't need IT staff to maintain a server, you don't need a server room, you don't need a hardware, and you 
cut papers and inks because you don't need to print anymore. So over the last six years I've been adopting cloud, we print very little. We only print when there's a training available. We used to have a lot of training run, especially GST. But nowadays, every, even training has gone online. Every, everyone is training online and customer can accept it. Why? Because they don't want to spread COVID-19. Right? It's best to do training online. And there's a real-time information. So if I were to update the data inside the system today, tomorrow, uh, my accountant, my CEO, my salesperson will be able to see that information. It doesn't actually don't have to wait for tomorrow. It's just within a few minutes, right? But of course, you know, it takes time for them to take log into the system and then have a look at the information. Secure and reliable, as I mentioned just now. So is that uh, adopting a small accounting software? Why do you need to move a cloud ERP version? Reason is because firstly, headcounts has grown and you have multiple outlets all over Malaysia and even cross country. Operations become very complex and lengthy. Approval, very difficult. Too much manual paper uh, work around. Paperwork is a lot, right? You have tons of paper that you need to pass around for approval, this and that. Why don't we make it online? Access is not flexible. Why? Because access to, let's say, I only want to perform bank reconciliation access, but that system may not be able to cater to you. So you need to move to the ERP level. It means if you have one or all of this, it means one thing. You have outgrown your current software, right? The small accounting software can no longer cater to your needs. So some of the unique features of cloud accounting or ERP, automation or consolidation with intercompany elimination is automated, data analysis and insights with pie charts and bar graph, online approvals, reminders are all available, customized access form done by the user themselves, Elimination the need of server network and of course data import using CSV or integration with the party solutions. So let's take a look at this uh, cloud ERP called Oracle NetSuite. It is the first cloud ERP company started in 1998 and there are 5,000, more than 5,005 now employees globally with 40 over 1,000 organizations and subsidiaries globally. 1 billion revenue run rate, office in over 13 countries and now is growing very fast in Malaysia. Acquired for 9.3 billion in 2016, July. Previously, it was called Net Ledger, and now a global business unit part of Oracle. So this is a look of it uh, when you log into the system. You have very nice looking bar graph on the left, pie chart on the right, and then you have all the analysis and ratio as well. You even have reminder on the left. So anything that you need to, the system to remind you rather than you go and remind yourself, such as PO to approve, uh, bills to pay, you name it, you can set all this by yourself. So these are the bar graph that you can customize yourself. User can change all this by themselves and each person who log into the system, they can customize it. That, this is the subsidiary navigator whereby you can see the consolidation of your entity. So for example, if Malaysia is very common whereby you have a lot of Sandram Berhad that is owned by one holding company. And each time when you click one Sandram Berhad, for example, uh, NA, as you can see there, you will be able to see the financials of that particular entity. And later, if you want to see the consolidated figures, you just click the consolidated uh, entity. And there are a lot of ratio analysis uh, available, real-time basis, for example, gross profit margin, current ratio, quick ratio, debt ratio, all these are calculated by the system itself and easy access on navigation. And of course, you can access it through the smartphone, the iPad or tablet, as well as your web browser. Some of the uh, benefits of using NetSuite is customized access. So for example, I want to give access only to salespeople and they only access to certain region of the customer. I can do that using the access. I can customize the access. Whether I want to give uh, issue quotation only or issue invoice as well, it's up to me. As the administrator, I'm able to do that. Other than that, I can always change whether they want to view only or edit or create or full access. And it can be any function within the system. I can also import CSV. So for example, I have point of sales and I don't want to integrate. I can, of course, I can download the Excel into CSV format and then I upload into the system. Or I prefer to integrate so that no human uh, will be required to perform this task. And there is a customer zone 
whereby your customer is able to view all the registered. So meaning uh, invoice, payment, credit notes, you name it. They can access by their own to view all this. This is an example of it. And other than that, you can always uh, manage your inventory on real-time basis. And there is a reorder point that you can set. For example, uh, if uh, quantity is below 100, then I want it to be prompt in on my reminder field that I need to order this product, let's say 100 plus. And it can, we can also set the maximum. We can also set, uh, let's say, lot item where there's an expiry. We can also set serial number if I'm selling machines and all those that require serial number. Right. How about approvals? Now, I believe a lot of Malaysian companies are still using paper approval. Right. So every time I want a manager to approve, I will take a paper, print out, sign, fill in all the information, and then pass to the manager. But the manager is not in the office, and especially during MCO. How am I going to continue to operate? But if you use online cloud ERP, you can just create that transaction if you are the creator and then move on to the next approval, which is my manager, and then it could be the next approval, which is the CEO or even CFO. And all this can be done and customized online using the system. So if that manager or person travels to another country or travels somewhere else, or touch wood, if MCO comes back again, where everyone can't travel, then your business can still operate. Why? Because everything is online now. Fixed asset management is very common, right? Not every company will adopt, but they will love to have it. Why? Because if you don't have fixed asset management, then all your fixed asset is everywhere and you have no idea where are your fixed asset, who is managing it, who is tracking it, and probably you have loss of fixed asset, stolen or damaged. You don't even know. So all this will be required in order to manage your fixed asset properly. You can even automate the depreciation if you want a straight line basis on five years, or 10 years, uh, even reducing balance, and even other method that is common in other countries like US or Australia, you can also implement all based on a usage basis, right? Customized forms and fields. Printout definitely can be customized. Even your forms, the look of it, when you want to enter data, it can be changed by the user itself. Even if let's say I want to put in an extra field so that I can track certain information inside, then whenever I click on this transaction, I can see that field of information that I need. How about consolidation? Yes, consolidation um, is not very common in a lot of ERP, but NetSuite has it. How does it work is whenever you have multi-entity and you have cross transaction between each entity, the consolidation function will be automated, meaning if I were to build from company A to company B, it's under the same roof, same group, the transaction will be auto eliminated eliminated when uh, you do you perform consolidation right so uh, if you don't have this function how will you do it normally accountants will download each and every entity into microsoft excel and then perform consolidation by eliminating it manually using your knowledge the accountant's knowledge of course and then inside the excel you have to maintain it every month the figure if it changes you need to maintain and change the figure in Excel. Now I met quite a number of um, companies with multiple entity and they have to do that. Imagine if let's say you have about 20 entities, how much time spent doing consolidation? Probably at least three to five days. Why? Because you need to make sure the figures time and each time the data changes, you need to change your Excel sheet figure again and again and again. How about other reports like budget versus actual, or actual this month versus last month versus last year versus last year last month. All those, can it be done using NetSuite uh, Cloud ERP? Yes, it can be done and it can be automated, right? So once you set up all this template, it's ready. Just one click or button, you can see all this report. So for accountants, accounting people, and even the users of operations and sales, they can uh, automate a lot of processes online using NetSuite. Another uh, good function that I like is uploading bank statement. So a lot of uh, software, uh, especially desktop, doesn't have this feature whereby you can upload the bank statement using CSV format and then you can perform auto match, right? How does it auto match? For example, uh, let's say I run a training business and uh, we do run training business and let's say um, we have about 20 customers 
bank in let's say 100 ringgit each person some by check some by uh, online of course we will try to you know encourage everyone to upload uh, transfer online so that when it's transferred into uh, from the bank statement it is uh, uploaded into the bank statement inside the net suite then we will be able to see the information such as the customer name the amount and even invoice number we will always encourage them to key in the invoice number so that it will perform the system will perform auto matching inside the system against your actual transaction of invoice that you created it will really cut down the time spent using uh, this system by doing bank reconciliation because most of it has been matched how about payment is even easy right payment is you create you control it the minute you transfer the payment it will appear and auto match of course, try to encourage to use uh, online transfer rather than check. Because in check, uh, in Malaysia, we all know about it. If it's check, the only words that come out is check clearing debit. That's it. You can't match at all. The only thing is the amount. So for our business, as we are 100% online, we always encourage transfer online. Then the matching and everything will be done easily. Other net suite features available are such as project or cost center, uh, profit, uh, profit center reporting, location, for example, location um, reporting for inventory, report drill down, you can click from the PNL down to GL, down to transaction, even attachment is available. So this concept of having attachment is really, really useful and very good. Why? Because if you take a photo of the supply invoice and attach inside the system, you can always review back or auditor can check very easily and there is audit log available who did what inside the system is easily recognized and user can customize their own report if they want to there are also auto email reports as well as integration available now uh, lastly i would like to say that we are living in an unprecedented time where crisis occurs too frequent unless we change the way we work we will continue to be disrupted and face stiff competitions not only from within the country but also from outside the country. The only way to survive is to change now. Um, thank you for your time. This is my last slide. Currently, uh, MDEC is, uh, we are a partner, a proof provider for our solution, especially Oracle NetSuite. So there is a grant available of 50%. And of course, we are providing additional discount of 5% for all SRBytes attendees. Uh, the code is MCO SRBytes. If you would like to inquire further information about Oracle NetSuite or even some other solution that we have, you can feel free to info, uh, email us at info at highpinesdc.com. Right? All right, fantastic. And I see you've also left us uh, your contact details on screen. So guys, if you have any questions, just go ahead and take note of that email. Uh, now we have a question in our comments. I just actually saw this, but guys, once again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the Q&A box so we can track them. Now this one is from uh, Aslina. Now Aslina is wondering, um, can this be used for retail posts with accounts? Yes, definitely. So like I mentioned, the solution can be easily integrated with a uh, point of sale solution. Now there is one already available called Storehub and it's, there are a few companies already using it and we are working closely with Storehub. So that's one of them. And a lot of other cloud uh, point of sales are also available to perform integration with Oracle NetSuite. Okay, lovely. Let's see what other questions that just came in. All right, so we have another one. Is there any way we can collect uh, monthly reoccurring payments? Yes, there is. Uh, for example, invoice for uh, rental, right? Rental is very common. Our maintenance. Now, what we can do is inside the system, we can create a safe uh, transaction and then we can automate recurring. So automatically every month, it will be created by the system by itself, right? All you have to do is uh, look at it, review and send out. Or if you are very confident, you can even be automatically emailed out to your customer, right? And you can be copied as well inside the email. So each time that invoice is sent out, you have a copy as well. Then you are sure, oh, okay. So this invoice has been sent out to the customer. I'm very sure the customer has received. And there is a tracking available as well. So whenever the customer opens up that email and look at that invoice, there is a record inside NetSuite that says customer has opened up or, or email sent and customer has opened up. Right. Okay, so what happens if the customer does not reply? Well, uh, we are sure that the customer has read. If the customer doesn't reply, 
there is a reminder you can set and then just click send reminder uh, dear customer you have yet to make payment for this then you can put in whatever nice uh, wordings available <laughs> please feel free to you know contact us if you need any further information so i love this feature very much why because if you need to do, always call up the customer and say hey you know mr chia you know you haven't paid you're okay you know number one it takes a lot of time number two customer don't like to hear your voice sometimes so instead you use a email reminder and customer will say hey oh sorry sorry mr chia well you know uh, i've been busy with my work suddenly my sales have grown I just miss out. Uh, since I saw your email, I will make payment immediately. And it happens to us a lot of time because we use that feature a lot. So customers sometimes just forget, not purposely. So uh, if you want to send reminder very frequent, that's fine, but it's up to you. I think it's a nice and softer way to approach the customer as well to give them like a gentle reminder. So yeah. that's very nice. Yeah. Okay, our next question is, what about auto debit from clients' bank accounts or credit cards? Is that possible? Now you need to perform a uh, integration with a platform to have the auto debit because NetSuite is not a bank collection, right? You need to let's say you make use of IPA DA. So let's say there in that uh, invoice that you send out, there is a link to IPA DA. They just click on the link and then they make payment. So once they make payment, then of course IPA DA will give you a report that these are the payment from your customer. Please have a look at it. Then of course as an accountant, you need to do the consolation because they will send you one big lump sum and a report, right? But that report, if you can get it in a CSV format, I believe it can be done, you can just need to upload into the system and perform the matching against your invoices. All right, super. Now this one is from Michael. I love how, Michael, I love it how you don't, you don't allow us to forget your name because each time he starts the question, he goes, Michael here, and I like that. You know, it's a very good strategy. I'm keeping an eye on you. So this one is from Michael. Now Michael's question is, uh, I might have missed it out, but do you also provide staff training post the purchase or subscription? If yes, any professional certification available for NetSuite for their skills recognition? Thanks. Okay, let me try to understand. Do you also provide staff training post the purchase or subscription? If yes, any professional certification available? All right, okay. Yes, uh, NetSuite is just like SAP. There, is a, there are certification available if you want to do that. Other than that, we also provide uh, online training from our team, our colleague here, and we can perform online or even face-to-face. -face. Of course, nowadays people uh, prefer uh, online training. And uh, if it's for public, we do that as well. Uh, if you already purchased and you want to do all these training, there are online training available by NetSuite themselves, or it can be done by us. Of course, there is a certification available if you want to take it. There are foundation, there are some specialization, whether it's as a functional consultant or as a programmer of NetSuite. They are available. Okay, we have another question just came in. Now this one is from Sing Wong. Now Sing Wong would like to know, can you indicate the investment cost for a 10 user environment, assuming it's with minimal customization? Just a ballpark figure. Thank you. Okay, so um, I will always say uh, there is a minimum fee. Just roughly look at it. It's about 15,000 US dollar, right? So that will be uh, include about three to five users and basic uh, financial with inventory management without lot item, without serial uh, item, nor uh, number that you want. But it's good enough to maintain for a uh, service industry with basic uh, inventory management. Right? And the payment is uh, on a yearly basis. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so now we, we currently don't have, oh, we have another question that just came in, just not about to wrap this up. Okay, um, now next question is, any minimum requirement purchase of NetSuite in order to get the 50% MDEC grant? Uh, there is no minimum requirement. And uh, of course, the 50% is based on the invoice value. So if, let's say the invoice value is, for example, 20,000 ringgit, and the maximum you can get is 5,000 ringgit. So 20,000 less 5,000, you only need to pay 15,000 ringgit. That's how it works with MDEP grant. Okay, thank you. Our next question is from Carlock. Now, Carlock asks to know, if those data and cloud and once subscribe, how's the existing data? Okay, let me try to understand this. Huh? Yeah. How's the existing data? Those in cloud and once unsubscribe, how's it? Okay. Meaning, once you have used uh, cloud accounting or cloud ERP or Oracle NetSuite, all your existing data inside the system can be downloaded into Excel as well as uh, PDF format, right? 
So for LHDN, you need to maintain or even custom. You are required to maintain minimum seven years of accounting data. So long as you all you have all this data inside Excel and try to have one copy in PDF as well, that's a good practice. And then you can always prove it to LHDN. Or when you decide, okay, I want to have uh, to use another system, then you use the data inside the Excel to upload into another system. Okay, Carla, I hope that answers your question. Now, this one, next one is from Philip. Hello again, Philip. Now, Philip's question is, is it a whole suite or can the user choose the modules required? Yes, uh, the user can choose the module, but the basic module will start with the financial module. That is, you have AP, AR, GL, uh, invoicing, quotation, and inventory management. That's the basic module. So later on, we let's say, oh, okay, I need it for multiple entity. I have 20 entity. Yes, then you add on one module. Or I want to manage my operations in terms of purchase requisition. Can I do that? Yes, add on another module. Or I want to, you know, uh, using EFT function, there's an EFT module available. So you just need to add on the module. So it's like whenever you need it or when you expand it, you can add on to it. And in terms of number of users, same thing. If today, let's say you start with three users, you're not sure, you want to test it out, fine. And three users, next year, oh, okay. You are very confident, you want to add 10 users, fine. Then you add next year. So you only start paying next year. That's how it works. I see. Okay. And in addition to Philip's question, he's asking, uh, is warehousing an add-on? Well, um, it depends on your definition of warehousing. Uh, so each time when we ask customer about warehousing, they have different uh, meaning. Um, the common one is, okay, I want to manage the inventory inside my warehouse. Number one, whereabout are they? That's called bin. Number two, location. Let's say I have two warehouse. I want to manage location. Location will be included in the base. Uh, bin, you will need to add on because then you will have also the uh, lot items, serial number, and a lot of other functions that you can manage within the warehouse. Yes, I would say if you want those features, that is, uh, we call it advanced inventory. Okay, Philip, thank you for your question. Now, this one's from Len Lee. Now, Len Lee would like to know, is Netsy designed for auditing and taxation integration? Well, um, I mentioned this software is available for integration, whether uh, so long as there is an API or even FTP is available to do that. So we have one uh, point of sale software that integrates with NetSuite using FTP because that point of sales uh, can only use this method, right? Now, in terms of auditing, uh, I'm an accountant as well and I'm with MIA. Now, you want, if you want to audit and you want to pull data from NetSuite or any cloud accounting system, yes, it can be done provided this whether the owner allows you to do that right because if you can pull data from the accounting software uh, the owner may not be comfortable so you need to get approval from the owner to do that uh, because audit doesn't happen all the time right now tax same thing you know income tax you can do calculation and all those yes there is api you can do that to perform calculation from time to time easily uh, again the same question will be will the owner allow that's the question Right. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Xin Hao, I think we're going to wrap things up here. We have no more questions for now, but if they are, you know where to ask him. His uh, contact details are on screen right now. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your in-depth presentation. I think you have brought a lot of knowledge to the SME Digital Fest 3.0. To so everyone mm -hmm. else who's watching, let's give him a virtual round of applause. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Okay. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, feel free to stay on for the rest of the day. We still have a lot of panelists and panel discussions to take place. Uh, Xin Hao, you have a nice day now, and uh, we'll see you yeah. soon. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Exabytes. Grow your business online.